Good evening. Um, I'm just going to do a talk today about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, this is a great article, actually. Um, it's basically, it's very scholarly, and it's strong evidence for the accuracy of biblical scripture. It says here, Dr. Patrick Zuckerman reviews the discovery of and important historical findings from the Dead Sea Scrolls. The texts discovered provide clear evidence as to the accuracy of our version of the Old Testament and the care with which it was preserved. So I'm just going to give you a story of the scrolls. So worship at the sacred Jerusalem temple had become corrupt with seemingly a little hope for reform. A group of devoted Jews removed themselves from the mainstream and began a monastic life in the Judean desert. Their studies of the Old Testament scriptures led them to believe that God's judgment upon Jerusalem was imminent and that the anointed one would return to restore the nation of Israel and purify their worship. Anticipating this moment, the Essenes retreated into the Qumran desert to await the return of their Messiah. This community, which began in the 3rd century BC, devoted their days to the study and copying of sacred scripture as well as theological and sectarian works. As tensions between the Jews and the Romans increased, the community hid their valuable scrolls in caves along the Dead Sea to protect them from the invading armies. Their hope was that one day the scrolls would be retrieved and restored to the nation of Israel. In AD 70, the Roman general Titus invaded Israel and destroyed the city of Jerusalem, along with its treasured temple, it is at this time that the Qumran community was overrun and occupied by the Roman army. The scrolls remain hidden for the next 2,000 years. So, in 1947, a Badawn shepherd named Muhammad Ahmed El Dahib was searching for his lost goat and came upon a small opening of a cave. Thinking that his goat may have fallen, into the cave, he threw rocks into the opening, and instead of hearing a startled goat, he heard the shattering of clay pottery. He lowered himself into the cave, and he discovered several sealed jars. He opened them, hoping to find treasure. To his disappointment, he found them to, to contain leather scrolls. He collected seven of the best scrolls, and left the other fragments scattered on the ground. Muhammad eventually brought some of the scrolls to a cobbler, an antiques dealer in Bethlehem named Kando. Kando, thinking the scrolls were written in Syriac, brought them to a Syrian Orthodox Archbishop named Ma Samuel. Ma Samuel recognised that the scrolls were written in Hebrew and suspected that they may be very ancient and valuable. He eventually had the scrolls examined by John Trevor at the American School of Oriental Research. Trevor contacted the world's foremost Middle East archaeologist, Dr. William Albright, and together these men confirmed the antiquity of the scrolls and dated them to sometime between the 1st and 2nd century BC. So, after the initial discovery, archaeologists searched other nearby caves between 1952 and 1956. They found 10 other caves that contained thousands of ancient documents as well. One of the greatest treasures of ancient manuscripts had been discovered, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, the scholars were anxious to confirm that these Dead Sea Scrolls were the most ancient of the Old Testament manuscripts in the Hebrew language. Three types of dating tools were used. Tools from archaeology, from the study of ancient languages called paragraphy, sorry, palegraphy, and orthography, and the carbon carbon 14 dating method. Each can derive accurate results. When all the methods arrive at the same conclusion, there is an increased reliability in the dating. Archaeolo archaeologists studied the pottery, coins, graves and garments at Kerbet, Qumran, where the Essenes lived. 
They arrived at a date ranging from the 2nd century BC to the 1st century AD. Pelographers studied the style of writing and arrived at dates ranging from the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD. Scientists using the radiocarbon dating method dated the scrolls to range from the 4th century BC to the 1st century AD. Since all the methods came to a similar conclusion, scholars are very confident in their assigned date for the text. The scrolls date as early as the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD. The 11 caves were discovered and contained nearly 1,100 ancient documents, which included several scrolls and more than 100,000 fragments. Fragments from every Old Testament book, except for the book of Esther, were discovered. Other works including apocryphal books, commentaries, manuals of discipline for the Qumran community and theological texts. The majority of the texts were written in the Hebrew language, but there were also manuscripts written in Aramaic and Greek. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Among the 11 caves, Cave 1, which was excav excavated in 1949, and Cave 4 excavated in 1952, they proved to be the most productive caves. One of the most significant discoveries was a well-preserved scroll of the entire book of Isaiah. The famous copper scrolls were discovered in Cave 3 in 1952. Unlike most of the scrolls that were written on leather or parchment, these were written on copper and provided directions to 64 sites around Jerusalem that were said to contain hidden treasure. So far, no treasure has been found at the sites that have been investigated. The oldest known piece of biblical Hebrew is a fragment from the book of Samuel discovered in cave four and is dated from the third century BC. The war scroll found in caves one and four is an estilogical text describing a 40 year war between the sons of light and the evil sons of darkness. The temple scroll discovered in cave 11 is the largest and describes a future temple in Jerusalem that will be built at the end of the age. Indeed, these were the most ancient Hebrew manuscripts of the Old Testament ever found and their contents would yield valuable insights to our understanding of Judaism and early Christianity. So I'm just going to talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Masoretic Texts. If anyone doesn't know what the Masoretic Text is, it's the text of the Old Testament, known as the Masorite, Masoretic Text. So the Dead Sea Scrolls play a crucial role in assessing the accurate preservation of the Old Testament, with its hundreds of manuscripts from every book except Esther. Detailed comparisons can be made with more recent texts, now, the Old Testament that we use today, like I've just mentioned, is translated what is called the Masoretic Text. The Masorites, Masorets were Jewish scholars who between AD 500 and 950 gave the Old Testament the form that we use today. Until the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1947, the oldest Hebrew text of the Old Testament was the Masoretic Aleppo Codex, which dates to AD 935. With the dis discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, we now had manuscripts that predated the Masoretic text by about 1,000 years. Scholars were anxious to see how the Dead Sea documents would match up with the Masoretic text. If a significant amount of differences were found, we could conclude that our Old Testament text had not been well preserved. Critics along with religious groups such as Muslims and Mormons, often make the claim that the present-day Old Testament has been corrupted and is not well preserved. According to these religious groups, this would explain the contradictions between the Old Testament and their religious teachings. After years of careful study, it has been concluded that the Dead Sea Scrolls give substantial confirmation that our Old Testament has been accurately preserved. The scrolls were found to be almost identical with the Masoretic text. Hebrew scholar Miller Burroughs writes, it is, a it is a matter of wonder that through something like 1,000 years, the text underwent 
so little alteration. As I said in my first article on the scroll, here, herein lies its chief importance, supporting the fidelity of the Masoretic tradition. A significant comparison study was conducted with the Isaiah scroll written around 100 BC. That was found among the Dead Sea documents and the book of Isaiah found in the Masoretic text after much research Scholars found that the two texts were practically identical. Most variants were minor, spelling differences, and none affected the meaning of the text. I'm just going to quote an Old Testament scholar, and he is one of the most respected Old Testament scholars, the late Gleason Archer, and he examined the two Isaiah scrolls found in Cave 1 and wrote, even though the two copies of Isaiah discovered in Qumran Cave 1 near the Dead Sea in 1947 were a thousand years earlier than the oldest dated manuscript previously known, which is, was in AD 980, they proved to be word for word identical with our standard Hebrew Bible in more than 95% of the text. The 5% of variation consisted chiefly of obvious slips of the pen, and variations in spelling. So this is a respected Old Testament scholar, okay? I'm giving you a name there, Gleason Archer. Google him, check him out. Well respected. So despite the thousand year gap, scholars found the Masoretic text and Dead Sea Scrolls to be nearly identical. The Dead Sea Scrolls provide valuable evidence that the Old Testament had been accurately and carefully preserved. Now, one of the evidence used in defending the deity of Christ is the testimony of prophecy. There are over 100 prophecies regarding Christ in the Old Testament. These prophecies were made centuries before the birth of Christ and were quite specific in their detail. Skeptics questioned the date of the prophecies and some even charged that they were not recorded until after or at the time of Jesus, and therefore discounted their prophetic nature. There is strong evidence that the Old Testament canon was completed by 450 BC. The Greek translation of the Old Testament, which is the Septuagint, is dated about 250 years before Christ. The translation process occurred during the reign of Ptolemy, Philadelphus, who ruled from 285 to 246 BC. It can be argued that a complete Hebrew text from which this Greek translation would be derived must have existed prior to the 3rd century BC. The Dead Sea Scrolls provided further proof that the Old Testament canon existed prior to the 3rd century BC. Thousands of manuscripts, fragments from the Old Testament books except Esther, were found predating Christ's birth and some date as early as the 3rd century BC. For example, portions from the book of Samuel date that early and fragments from Daniel date to the 2nd century BC. Portions from the 12 minor prophets date from 150 BC to 25 BC. Since the documents were found to be identical with our Masoretic text, we can be reasonably sure that our Old Testament is the same one that the Essenes were studying and working from. Okay, so remember what I mentioned at the beginning at the article, they have three ways of um, studying these things. Okay, so I'll just read that again just to refresh your mind on that. Okay, so just give me one second. Okay, so the, t the types of dating tools were the study of ancient languages called palagraphy, an orthography, and the carbon 14 dating method. So that's how they got to the dates. So anyone that claims that the Old Testament prophecies were written later just to make it look like Jesus was that Messiah are completely wrong because the evidence is against you, my friends. Okay. Now, now I'm going to talk about the Messiah and the scrolls. What kind of Messiah was expected by first century Jews? Critical scholars alleged that the idea of a personal Messiah was a later interpretation made by Christians. Instead, they believed that the Messiah was to be the nation of Israel and represented Jewish nationalism. 
The Dead Sea Scrolls written by Old Testament Jews reveal the messianic expectation of Jews during the time of Christ. Studies have uncovered several parallels to the messianic hope revealed in the New Testament, as well as some significant differences. First, they were expecting a personal messiah rather than a nation or a sense of nationalism. Secondly, the Messiah would be a descendant of King David. Third, the Messiah would confirm his claims by performing miracles, including the resurrection of the dead. Finally, he would be human and yet possess divine attributes. And that's exactly what Christ did. He was a man. He was fully God and he was fully man. And he did miracles. He raised the dead and he gave sight to the blind. It's all in the scriptures. Now, a manuscript was found in K4 entitled The Messianic Apocalypse, copied in the first century BC, and it describes the anticipated ministry of the Messiah. The passage sounds very similar to the ministry of Jesus, as recorded in the Gospels in Luke chapter 7, 21 to 22. John the Baptist's disciples came to Jesus and ask him if he is the Messiah. And Jesus responds, go tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news brought to them. But with the similarities, there are also differences. Christians have always taught that there is one Messiah, while the Essene community believed in two. One an ironic or priestly messiah and the other a Davidic or royal messiah who leads a war to end the evil age. So I'll just read this passage uh, which they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And basically this is what it says. For he will honour the pious upon the throne of his, of his eternal kingdom. Release the captives. Open the eyes of the blind, lifting up those who are oppressed, for he shall heal the critically wounded. He shall raise the dead. He shall bring good news to the poor. Amen. The Essenes were also strict on matters of ceremonial purity. While Jesus criticised these laws, he socialised with tax collectors and lepers, which was considered defiling by the Jews. Jesus taught us to love one's enemies while the Essenes taught hatred towards theirs. They were strict Sabbatarians, and Jesus often violated this important aspect of the law. The Qumran community rejected the inclusion of women, Gentiles and sinners, while Christ reached out to those very groups. Now, it says here that Jesus often violated this aspect of the law. Um, I'll tend, I beg to differ on that, because the Bible says, that Christ came to fulfill the law. Okay. Jesus would always mention that the Sabbath was not for man, but the Lord made the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. So just to clear that up. Okay. So Jesus explained the meaning of the Sabbath and give it a fuller meaning. The many differences show that the Essenes were not the source of early Christianity, as some scholars propose. Rather, Christianity derived its teachings from the Old Testament and the ministry of Jesus. The Dead Sea Scrolls have proven to be a significant discovery confirming the accurate preservation of our Old Testament text, the messianic prophecies of Christ, and also valuable insight into first century Judaism. The Dead Sea Scrolls have been an asset in the debate regarding two major and well-disputed books of the Old Testament, which are Daniel and Isaiah. Conservative scholars maintain that Daniel was written in the 6th century BC, as the author declares in the first chapter. The New Testament writers treated Daniel as a prophetic book with predictive prophecies. Liberal scholars began teaching in the 18th century that it was, it was written in the Maccabee, sorry, Maccabean period or the 2nd century BC. If they are correct, Daniel would not be a prophetic book that predicted the rise of Persia, Greece and Rome. So, before the discovery of the scrolls, critical scholars argued that the Aramaic language used in Daniel was from a time no earlier than 167 BC. During the Maccabean period, 
Other scholars, such as well-respected archaeologist Kenneth Kitchen, studied Daniel and found that 90% of Daniel's Aramaic vocabulary was used in documents from the 50th century BC or earlier. The Dead Sea Scrolls revealed that Kitchen's conclusion was well-founded. The Aramaic language used in the Dead Sea Scroll proved to be very different from that found in the book of Daniel. Old Testament scholars have concluded that the Aramaic in Daniel is closer to the form used in the 4th and 5th century BC than to the 2nd century BC. Critical scholars challenged the view that Isaiah was written by a single author. Many contended that the first 39 chapters were written by one author in the 8th century BC and the final 26 chapters were written in the post elix period. Now the reason for this is that there are some significant differences in the style and content between the two sections. If this were true, Isaiah's prophecies of Babylon in the later chapters would not have been predicted prophecies, prophecies but written after the events occurred. With the discovery of the Isaiah scroll at Qumran, scholars on both sides were eager to see if the evidence would favour their position. The Isaiah scroll revealed no break or decremation between the two major sections of Isaiah. The scribe was not aware of any change in authorship or division of the book. Ben Syra, 2nd century BC. Josephus and the New Testament writers, regard, sorry, writers regarded Isaiah as written by a single author and containing predictive prophecy. The Dead Sea Scrolls added to the case for the unity and prophetic character of Isaiah. So I'm just going to talk about the inventory of the scrolls. The following is a brief inventory provided by Dr. Gleason Archer of the discoveries made in each of the Dead Sea Scrolls. I would um, look and research Dr. Gleason Archer. He's got much to say on this subject. So Cave 1 was the first cave discovered, excavated in 1949. Discoveries found was the Isaiah scroll, containing a well-preserved scroll of the entire book of Isaiah. Fragments were found from the other Old Testament books, which included Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Judges, Samuel, Ezekiel and the Psalms. Non-biblical books included the Book of Enoch, Sayings of Moses, the Book of Jubilee, the Book of Noah, the Testament of Levi and the Wisdom of Solomon. Fragments from commentary on Zahms, Micah and Zephaniah were also discovered. Cave 2 was excavated in 1952. Hundreds of fragments were discovered, including remains from the Old Testament books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Jeremiah, Job, Zahms and the Book of Ruth. Cave 3 was excavated in 1952. Here, archaeologists found the famous copper scrolls. These scrolls contain directions to 64 sites containing hidden treasures located around Jerusalem. So far, no treasure has been found at the sites investigated. K4, excavated in 1952, proved to be one of the most productive thousands of manuscripts. were recovered from nearly 400 manuscripts. So that's thousands of fragments we recovered from nearly 400 manuscripts. Hundreds of fragments from every Old Testament book were discovered, with exception of the book of Esther. The fragment from Samuel labelled labeled 4, and it says Q Samuel 17, is believed to be the oldest known piece of biblical Hebrew, dating from the 3rd century BC. Also found were fragments of commentaries on the Psalms, Isaiah and Nahum. The entire collection of Cave 4 is believed to represent the scope of the Essene, Essene Library. Cave 5 was excavated in 1952 and fragments from some Old Testament books along with the Book of Tobit were found. Cave 6, excavated in 1952, uncovered papyrus fragments of Daniel, of, sorry, of Daniel 1 and 2, sorry, I'll say that again, contain fragments of Daniel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and some other Essene literature. Cave 7 to 10 yielded finds of interest for archaeologists, 
but had little relevance for biblical studies. Cave 11 was excavated in 1956. It exposed well-preserved copies from some of the Zams, including the apocryphal Zam 151. In addition, a well-preserved scroll of part of Leviticus was found, and fragments of an apocalypse of the New Jerusalem, an Aramaic Targum or paraphrase of Job was also discovered. Indeed, these were the most ancient Hebrew manuscripts of the Old Testament ever found, and their contents would soon reveal insights that would impact Judaism and Christianity. So I'm just going to name a few authors here, a few books, if you want to read them, check them out. First one is James Vankerman and Peter Flint, The Meaning of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Randall Price, The Stones Cry Out. Gleason Archer, and that was the scholar that I mentioned before, the well-respected one. And his book is called A Survey of Old Testament Introduction. Miller Burroughs, The Dead Sea Scrolls. Quoted in Norman Geisler and William Nix. And we've got J. Barton Payne, Encyclopedia of Biblical Prophecy. And we've got Randall Price, finally, Secrets of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So this article is amazing. Um, and like I said, the guy is Dr. Patrick Zuckerman. And in this article, I've mentioned a few scholars. I've given my evidence. So the evidence is overwhelming for the accuracy of the Bible. And it was copied and we don't have any problems in any of the um, the writings at all. So there we have it. The Bible is accurate and we can trust it, folks. So I'd just like to end and say thank you very much for listening. Put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. And don't follow religion, but have a relationship with the true living God. And the true living God will lead you to Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.